It's been almost 10 years of using the GoTek USB floppy drive emulator instead of using real floppy disks. The original GoTek is really easy to use. You insert the floppy drive and then you've got buttons here to select which disk you want to load. I've got a sheet here which I use. So let's say you want to boot from Windows 98 SE boot disk. It's the index number two and then press enter and off it goes. You can see the thumb drive showing some activity. So really straightforward and simple to use. I received many comments from you to check out the flash floppy firmware, which is set to supercharge the GoTek. The flash floppy firmware is a lot more advanced. So firstly, to take full advantage, you want to have one of the newer upgraded GoTek devices, which has an OLED screen. We still have our two buttons here, but then a very nice dial and it also supports a little PC beeper here so we can hear some audio when we access the disks. So let's insert a disk and then with the dial here we can yeah navigate all the menu options, select the disks. So we can also see an index here as well as a directory folder structure. You can create subfolders. So let's load a MS-DOS boot disk here. There you go, it's now inserted. Press enter and off it goes. Something nifty I want to show you. Let's say you need a blank disk. Let's say you wanna create a boot disk from MS-DOS. There is a blank image file on the website. You can mount it and then now it's ready to be written onto. But there's more. Let's say you need a couple of blank disks. You can press the dial here, go into the eject menu and you'll find a copy paste option. So hit copy, move over to paste and it creates a copy of that image file. And you can repeat that, create a bunch of blank floppy images which you then use under DOS to let's say create a couple of boot disks and then you can eject the USB and rename those image files on your Windows desktop. Here we can see what the USB thumb drive looks like plugged in into a Windows computer. These are all the individual floppy images so it's very convenient to rename them. You can create folders subdirectories and really organize all your information. Very important is creating a FF subdirectory and then putting the configuration file here. We will later in the video dig a little bit deeper and go over some of those settings that I do recommend changing. This is the Flash Floppy main project website. I will put a link down below in the video description, supercharging your GoTech. There are heaps of interesting links. This is where you can download the Flash Floppy firmware and very important is reading the information on the wiki. The wiki is really well done. There's a ton of information on here and I do recommend you read all the details because the Flash Floppy firmware is a lot more advanced. It has way more features than the default GoTech. GoTech models, this one is interesting. It shows you the various models that have been released over the years. The latest version is this one here with the nice high resolution OLED screen and the dial. And when you're shopping around, make sure it mentions the Artery AT32F435 chip. This one has a lot of processing power and a lot of enough memory to really take advantage of this firmware. Most of the new GoTek drives already have Flash Floppy installed, but you always want to upgrade to the latest version, which you can grab here. And then you just follow these instructions. If your device already comes with the Flash Floppy installed, it's really easy. You just copy an update file onto a thumb drive and then hold down the two buttons. It's very convenient. However, if yours still has the original firmware, then you need to uh, use a, a slightly more complex process, but it's all explained here and really not too difficult. 
Also head to the image library. This is where you can download a blank floppy image which comes in very handy. And now let's dig a little bit deeper and let's have a look at this FF configuration file. So I will point out some of the more interesting aspects. The first one here under drive emulation, set the interface to IBM PC. Without that, it might be configured to be a drive for the Amiga. Under startup, I made a little change. I don't want a disk loaded when I turn it on. So ejected on startup, I change that to yes. Under image navigation, by default, it will auto select a file. So let's say you're using the dial to choose between image files. And if you wait a little bit too long, it will automatically load an image file. I didn't like that. So auto selecting a current file and auto selecting a current folder, I set that to zero. I want to push the button to confirm that choice. Out of the box, there was an issue with the display. It was rotated and I had to enter this option here, OLED-128 by 64, which is the resolution of the OLED screen and then dash rotate to flip it around. And now everything works correctly. There are lots of settings you can play around with. You can change the size of the font, the brightness of the screen, for example, and yeah, just the behavior of the text height and how it's arranged on the screen. You can configure if the screen turns itself off after some inactivity, or you can have it on all the time. And for example, here's an option to control the speed of the scrolling. So lots of options in this config file. So definitely take a look. And this is the power of the flash floppy firmware. You can really tweak it to your personal liking. There are many interesting boot disks and utilities that you can load on your GoTag to have an easier retro life. On the screen, a couple of videos with such disks that I can highly recommend.